very Asian, and I don't know. Uh, she can keep her Korean um, to herself. This is morning anchor Michelle Lee from our St. Louis station sharing a racist message she received after doing a segment on what Americans eat for New Year's. During the segment last year, she mentioned that she, as a Korean American, ate dumplings. So since sharing that incredibly disturbing message, Michelle has sparked a movement called Very Asian. And get this, she even made an appearance on The Ellen Show. So now she's also the author of a children's book called A Very Asian Guide to Korean Food. Michelle is also with us this morning here on the show. Hi, Michelle. First off, I want to congratulate you on January 19th being declared Very Asian Day in St. Louis. Wow, that's amazing. That's incredible. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm so appreciative of it. Uh, I've been surprised. You know, I wasn't sure if it was going to happen or not. And it's kind of cool because one of the co-sponsors of the proclamation is the first Asian American alderman in the city of St. Louis as well. So it's wow. just a celebration. And, you know, and anyone who knows it's very Asian is a play on words. Um, I think, you know, just love the, love the community building. So I'm, I was really excited and honored. So, Michelle, can you tell us a little bit about the last year, how you turned something that was so negative and could have been so traumatizing into something so positive? Well, thanks for asking that. I, you know, I don't think that I did it. I think that so many people, like, supported and compelled me to do it. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I always say, like, I didn't do anything. I just responded in a way that was honest um, for me. And then people were so ready to make it, a positive thing in general, you know, like just celebrating who we are, bringing our full identity to spaces, you know, and understanding that we all have multiple identities, you know, so like I'm a mom, I'm a, you know, a working mom, I have, um, you know, I'm Asian, but I'm also an adoptee, so my parents are, you know, um, are white, and <laughs> I grew up in rural, you know, in rural America, and, you know, I have a multiracial son, my, you know, so to me, it's just, it's the idea of, being proud of who you are, no matter where you were born, what you look like, uh, where you were raised. And I think that that's a really positive thing in general. So I'm glad to be a part of it all. Oh, and you've received such a great response to in the Very Asian Foundation, already making so many great strides in the last year. Can you tell us a little bit about the foundation and what you've accomplished in the last year? Oh, sure. I mean, I feel like we've been sprinting through this last year. We launched the May Book Project, which is just an Asian American youth literature guide for all readers. Um, and we've had 100% success in, in participation in, in states that we've been in. So that's been really exciting. Um, we launched a micro grant program. We've raised tens of thousands of dollars for other Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander causes. I mean, we've been kind of busy, <laughs> but. Um, we just really believe in the mission of shining a light on Asian experiences through advocacy and celebration. There's, you know, there's a lot to advocate for, a lot of wrongs in the world, but there's also like a lot of room to celebrate and um, understand that we can live in dual existences. You know, sometimes we live in grief, but a lot of times we live in gratitude. And I think that's really um, our message. And then also just this idea of like, we have a right to tell our stories in all Absolutely. the places we live. And um, I just think that's a, a big part of what we do as journalists anyway. Of course, and then your book. Okay, so we have your book here on our set. It's geared towards children, a guide to Korean food and culture and the illustrations in it are just fantastic. What inspired you to create this children's book? Oh my goodness, well, really it was just the opportunity. Uh, Karen Chan is the publisher of Blue Books and she sent me a book that she wrote and my son loved it. It was the first time he saw himself as a main character. And I thought like, what? Um, so I thought that was eye opening to me. And I just reached out and said, thank you so much for this beautiful book. And then she said, have you ever thought about writing a kid's book? And I said, well, I have a lot of ideas, but I've never thought that I could do something like that. So I think it's really a great story of how people come in, they support you and they elevate you, you know, give you ideas that you thought you could never do before. And um, there's actually a lot of work that goes into kids' books and publishing that I had no idea. Um, it's not like you just like write something. There's there's a whole thing. So um, so it was a really great opportunity. And then um, the illustrator, Suna Rebecca Choi, just brought all the words to life. I mean, without her, the book would not be, I think, as compelling. You know. So I'm just really appreciative to two women 
who really worked on this aside from me and um, just it felt like a really great um, just partnership and support system. So now, Michelle, we know there's a lot of great recipes in this book, but which one is your favorite? <laughs> well, okay, so I, so I should say there are a lot of um, explanations of food, but the one recipe that we have in the back is a mandu recipe or a dumpling recipe um, because that's what went viral. But also, who doesn't like dumpling? Mm, um, yes. You know, I, I, every culture has a dumpling. They're just, you know, a little bit different. So, um, so the dumpling recipe is one that I had probably for like I want to say 20 years um wow. just from a, a friend of mine Korean mom <laughs> so now now that's my recipe too I love so it. Good. So Michelle, obviously this weekend, Lunar New Year. So we wanted to bring you in also to share that dumpling recipe with us. So why don't you tell us what's in it? We have all the ingredients here on our set. So kind of We're walk ready. us oh, through good. what's in it. We have the ingredient list well, also. I get my book out to you know? <laughs> <laughs> It's I a cheat put, sheet. <laughs> you know, it's like I have the same piece of paper that I look at over and over again. I have it mostly memorized. So sometimes I just forget like measurements. Um, I do beef or pork, like just put two packages together. You can also do like tofu if you'd like. Um, zucchini, an egg. Oh, and when you do the zucchini, you know, you cut it up like um, a racer size, like bite squares, and then you wring out the water. So like put it on a cheesecloth or a paper towel and just kind of get the water so it's not adding additional water. Um, garlic, onions, all the good stuff. I use a little bit of sesame oil. Um, and then, you know, salt and pepper to taste. And if you feel like you really want just like a little extra bite, just put um, some small pieces of kimchi, like the fermented cabbage, mm, the green yes. cabbage, in. You won't be able to taste it when you actually make the, the mandu, but it's kind of like, you know, like beef and cabbage go together so well. So that's um, yes. all I do. And then you put it in a little round circle um, wonton, or if you have the squares at your grocery store, that's fine too. So we have the um, circles here on our, our table, so tell us what we need to do. Oh, okay. So get out just a little bit of scoop, you know, just get out your wonton, and then take a little scoop, and just I'm not too much, scoop. but just put it in the center. A little scoop in the center. And fold it in half like a little moon. And then we have a bowl of water too. Do we need to put water on the edge or anything? I'll put water around the edge. You could okay. do eggs, I guess, if you want. Like. Okay. Water is fine. Yeah. And that's okay. kind of like so the glue put the that puts it edge. together. And then fold it in half. Okay. Ooh, I put too much. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> I got too excited. Big wonton. <laughs> <laughs> you might have ravi big ravioli. There you go. End. Ravioli. Um, yes. Yeah. It doesn't take much. That's why you end up making like a hundred, you know, on Lunar New Year or wherever. And, and then uh, freeze half of them. So, like, I will it. always make a ton and then I'll put them in baggies and I'll, you know, go through those. This is months. hard work, Michelle. It's I, like, really I hard. think of my grandmother. We own oh, a well, restaurant. Let me give you, and, like, this let me give you a tip. Hours. You can get one of these. Do you see this? What? Oh. That's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes the I imprint have, for I you. Think it's just the Asian market, you can get it online. I mean, this was like 99 cents. It saved so much time. I this need is that. This so fun. And then Michelle, so then after that, once you make it, you either put it in the fryer on a, a pan with like some vegetable oil, right? Or you can steam yeah. it. We have a steamed one. Let's show you some TV magic here. If we open this up, you can see our steamed creations. Our editor, Aiden, made these this morning for us. And then we could also fry them. So tell us a little bit about that process. What do you do if you want to fry them or steam them? What I do, I usually put some oil in a pan, just like some, you know, um, some canola oil. And then when it gets hot, I put like maybe five or six uh, mandu on the, um, in the pan. And then once I, they get kind of like a little bit crispy, then I put a, just a teensy bit of water on the frying pan. Ooh, and then what does the water do? Lid. Hmm. Well, the water kind of steams it, so that because but you have to be careful because that's when things like start going like this, you know, and you, go, oh, you can get popped with oil. You can have like a, yeah. a pro tip, you know, pro, pro tip, pro tip. <laughs> okay, but my second and third are do, better. Are you cooking? Yeah. So also, what I do though is if they're frozen, I'll do like some broth, and I'll just throw these in with a little bit of noodles, with a little bit of cabbage, with whatever vegetables I have. Makes a really nice, um, really nice soup too. So, and Mich the, you know, Michelle, you know, I wanted like to ask you Korean. though, 
What is the significance of dumplings in Korean culture? Because you, you talked about that in that broadcast on New Year's Day, and obviously you were talking about January 1st, I'm assuming. But still, ah. what, what's the significance of dumplings in Korean culture? Well, it's the same, I think, it's like every culture. It like brings, you know, um, fortune, wellness, health, uh, celebration. And really, um, Korean people usually eat dokguk, um, which is a rice cake stew. Mm. Um, I, the little rice cakes that are um, little cylinders. And, um, but then a lot of people do mandu dakuk, which okay. is putting the dumplings in. So Ooh, I it's starting to sizzle. Ooh, yes. It smells so good ah. in here. <laughs> okay, Michelle, by my fourth one, now they look better. <laughs> First one, no, not so much. You know what? Judge. They do not have to look good. As long as they taste good, that's exactly. the only thing that matters. That's all we're okay, worried about. Okay, do you like yeah. it steamed or do you like it fried better? Ooh. Well, I kind of like it fried. Yes. But if it's in a steam, <laughs> then, um, then I, I mean, I just, who doesn't like any kind of dumplings? It's, and it's the same material, you know, it's the same ingredients, so I can't complain. But well, I, I was I thinking about, you know, in St. Louis, they're known for fried ravioli, right? Oh, yeah. So really... Yeah. Ravioli? It's based. I I have, and it's basically you know a different version of a yeah. a dumpling. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's what I'm saying. Every culture has a dumpling. Mm -hmm. I mean pierogies, ravioli, whatever it is, you know. And An so empanada. It's <laughs> so true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when I talk to people, I'm like, if they've never made this recipe, I'm like, you're just making a giant meatball. <laughs> you know, you're just putting the ingredients for a meatball and you're throwing in some zucchini and maybe some kimchi if you want. But I mean, it's literally the easiest thing. Um, and then you, you know, once you make a batch, you've got a batch for like several months. That's right. Tim Prep in advance. Amazing. They do. I'm just hoping we don't burn them. I know. Let's not embarrass ourselves. Well, guys, if you would like to order a copy of Michelle's, if you would like to order a copy of Michelle's book, A Very Asian Guide to Korean Food, or to get Michelle's dumpling recipe, it is tried and true. Tim and I made mm. it. You can too. You can text the word Lunar, L-U-N-A-R, to our number 509-448-2000. We'll send you a link right to your phone. All right. Thanks, Michelle. We really appreciate you being you, here Michelle. on the show. Happy Chinese New Year to you. Gung Hei Fa Choi. I love you. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle.